All right, so welcome. In this video, basically, we're going to do textures. I'll see how this goes. This is going to be a pretty long session. I'll just fire this up right now. This is the finished thing. We can see here that we have a bunch of shapes, each with their own texture. And so at this point, it's uh, fairly Turing complete, you could say. We have different objects at different positions with different meshes and different textures. And I could totally change this all, all up. I'm just not very imaginative when it comes to design. So that's what we're gonna to work towards. Fingers crossed we'll get it done in one session, but it is gonna it is gonna take time. So let's um, first of all just have a look at the big picture. So the workflow is we are going to have some sort of file. You know, so it has some binary data whatever, and we're going to basically read that and get it into some sort of uh, array. So some sort of, you know, float pointer of some sort. Uh, for example, 0 0.195 and so on. And that will be achieved through um, libraries or functions basically. And then from that, we'll go to a Vulkan buffer, which is just some sort of data type of some sort. It's essentially the same thing, but it's a Vulkan thing. And we achieve that through um, memory mapped IO, basically the, um, you know, the good old mem copy function. And then what we need to do is take the contents of that, by the way, this will be CPU visible, and then we'll shift it over to an image. So if you imagine your image, and that transfer is a job which gets lodged on the, um, on the GPU. So we have some sort of memory transfer workload. It's on a command buffer, we send it over. But um, because Vulkan is Vulkan, we have a little bit extra here. Um, the image needs to be in a certain, well, it doesn't need to be, there's a general layout, which is just fine, but we do need to transition this. Um, I'm gonna put this into a uh, transfer destination layout and when the image gets created by default it's um, in an undefined layout it's just a chunk of memory so by default it's undefined so we'll need to trans uh, yeah transition so perform a transition job to get it into a layout where it can accept the um, the data and then we need to transition it into another layout where it's um, could be read by the shader so we have a transition and then we send the data over and then we transition it again so the thing is, I'm going to split this into a few, a few um, pieces because we'll have a class which represents sort of a quote unquote texture, but then at the same time, we'll have a bunch of helper functions which are used for working with general images. Okay, so this is one thing. This is one aspect of the picture, but then at the same time, there's the question of how do we get this into the shader? So I'll just flip over to this other, um, this other diagram. Now at the moment, we've got um, data that we're sending to the shader. So we've got uh, camera data. And there's only, only three matrices, so it's not not much at all. 
that's our uniform buffer. And then we have object data, which is essentially the model transforms representing the positions, rotations, etc., of all the objects. So that's a it's a pretty big one. I'm actually allocated 1024 model transforms, way more than we need, but that's perfectly fine. And this has all been bundled together into a descriptor set. And the reason for this is that um, a lot of devices can't actually bind that many things, so just group them together. And as well as that, okay, so let me just uh, do this. This is our frame. Here we have a bunch of triangles, just like we saw before, and a bunch of rectangles. And if you think I'm going to draw a star, you're out of your mind. Um, and what we're doing is we're taking this descriptor set, we're binding it, and the shader is reading that data and using it. So it goes, okay, we're drawing triangle number one, grab the first model matrix. Triangle number two, grab the second model matrix. And then we go into the tri uh, rectangles, grab some more, and so on. But um, we're doing this per frame. So um, let me call this a frame descriptor set because it is bound on a basis of once per frame. So frame descriptor set, and we have, I think, three frames in our swap chain. So it's fair to say we have three of these independent, grab one and render it. And those are um, allocated from a descriptor pool. So here's a little pool here. Okay, so yeah, all of those are allocated from the pool. The pool has a layout that it has to conform to, and so on and so on. All right, cool. So in addition to that, I want to pass through textures, but I can't pass them in the frame descriptor set because I want a different texture for each object. Well, really, we should start to think about how can we pack those textures all together. That's the next level. But for now, it's good just to see how to do it. So. Um, what I've got is I've got some sort of sampler object, just like OpenGL. This is a sampler 2D. It's got the image and the sampler in there all together. And that is allocated from its own descriptor pool. And, you know, this one is bound when these triangles are drawn and then I have some rectangles, so I'll make another one, allocate it from the pool, load it up with a texture and everything, and go ahead and bind that for the rectangles, and so on and so on. So I'm going to call this a mesh descriptor set. Because it's bound on the basis of each type of mesh. So... We act, well, in this diagram, we've got five descriptor sets. However, we have two descriptor set layouts. One layout, which has a uniform buffer and a storage buffer, and another layer, uh, layout, which just has a sampler. It's actually called a combined image sampler. And there's a whole bunch more details, but we'll just cover them as they come up. So. Without further ado, 